our Unitarian Universalist faith comes out of the Jewish and Christian traditions. We are religious cousins, if you will, um, sharing a family of faith. We know that truth is always growing. It's not stuck in one, one piece of a moment in time, but it, truth is ever evolving and that in our lives and our justice work, we are guided by seven principles. We like to say in our faith tradition, we need not think alike to love alike, and that these seven principles help guide us in how we live our personal lives, how we live in a community together, as well as how we hope the world might one day live. So our principles, affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Because you are alive on this planet, you have worth, you have dig dignity, no matter what you do, no matter who you're related to, no matter what your status in terms of where you come from, you are deserving of respect because you have worth, period. Also, we affirm that our world is interconnected. So the inherent worth and dignity is our first principle. Then we have five others, six others. Our last principle is the inherent and the interconnectedness of our world, which means that we know that what happens to the animals, what happens to plant life, what happens to other people affects us all. So what happens in Egypt and Syria and Tijuana affects us either directly or indirectly because we live in this connected web of relationship. We also believe that all should be treated fairly, should have the basic resources that one needs in order to live a full life. And our justice work is grounded in this affirmation. We find inspiration and truth in many places, yes, from the Bible, yes, from the Hebrew scriptures, but also we see it in the Quran, we see it in the world of nature, we see it in science, we see it in the lilies of the field, as well as our own experience that we take seriously that we can each experience awe and wonder and reflect on that and see how that connects us to that great mystery. We know that the sacred, the holy, is all around us and that it is helping us to learn and grow that we might be the most compassionate, kind, caring people that we can be. We know that we cannot know all of the answers to our questions. No matter how much we study, no matter how much we pray or meditate or reflect, that some things are left to mystery. And our mission statement is that the First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Diego is to create community, to nurture spiritual growth, and to act on our values that help heal the world. And we take this very seriously because we understand community to be right here, but we also keep trying to identify community bro more broadly every time we meet, every time we go into a neighborhood, every time we gather. We are always questioning about whose voice is not at the table. Community requires relationship building, requires deep listening and care, trust, because that is the foundation of how we help change the world. And then finally, our work for justice. We're not just here so that we as individuals can be made better, but we are here because we are to make the world a better place. It doesn't matter if one person is saved, if the whole world is lost. So we focus on justice and acting on our values to help heal the world, to help make sure that people are fed, clothed, homed, that people are not isolated or alone. Here in San Diego, and specifically our church, 
focuses in a few main areas of social justice, and I will talk about SOLAS and our detention uh, program, visitation program, but there are some other areas in which we also are very active. So the, one of the first and main areas is immigration and racial justice, um, economic justice, uh, reproductive justice, and climate justice, right? Because again, we believe that interconnectedness and that what happens to uh, one person affects us all is not just that one person. So let's talk about SOLAS. And SOLAS is our uh, visitation program to the detention center. ICE tells us that people usually are supposed to spend maybe just a few days in the detention center, but that's not true. You know, many of them have been there for months. Some of them have been there for years. And when it comes to being at the detention center for a very long time, some of these people, those who are refugees, don't have any family members, don't have anyone to come visit them. And those who do have family, after a few months, you know, the visits, uh, they, they stop visiting, basically. When our volunteers uh, go to the detention center, uh, they, the first thing they say when they meet with the person for the first time is, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a social worker, I'm here to listen. I'm here to be present with you, I'm here to just listen. And though it may sound like that's not a lot, believe me, it is a lot to offer to someone who has been away from their family, who's been away from their motherland for such a long time. To just be able to have someone willing to sit with you and uh, give you know, all their attention to you and just be seen and being reminded that you still have worth and dignity, right? That there is another human being that cares for you and, and for your well-being. It is, it is a lot of, uh, it is, I mean, it is great work.